You might have clicked on this video and wondered, is she serious? Is she really going to be comparing a children's toy to a theme park? And the answer is no, because technically the set is 18 plus, which means adults only. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This by far is one of the most profitable theme park experiences in the entire world. The area originally opened in 2010 and is based off the Harry Potter film franchise and was entirely designed with the author breathing down the back of Universal's neck. And that ultimately resulted in an incredibly accurate and impressive land in both Universal's Islands of Adventure Park as well as the Universal Studios Park in Orlando, Florida. The park originally opened depicting the famous Hogwarts Castle as well as a little bit of Hogsmeade, however in 2014, it expanded to include another famous location from the movies, Diagon Alley. Recently, LEGO released a set based off Gringotts Bank, and that meant you could have the entire Diagon Alley street in your own home for the low, low price of 870 US dollars. Granted, you would need an entire table to actually display the whole street, but just like the theme park, it was a beautiful scale replica of what was depicted in the movies. But for that price, my expectations of a product are absolutely through the roof. So if these LEGO sets do not perfectly represent what I can go and experience with my own eyes at a theme park in Orlando, then I don't want it. So instead of going back to London to compare it to the literal movie sets, off I went to Universal. Now Diagon Alley is located at the very back of the Universal Studios Park once you've passed all of the Minion propaganda. And much like LEGO, being a theme park, it had to be designed within certain constraints and had very specific goals in mind. For LEGO, usually there's playability, minifigures, price, whereas for Universal, there's rides, guest storage, and the concept of forced perspective. Welcome, Harry. To Diagon Alley. The deceptively small street is filled with condensed shops that lead you down to quite literally the main attraction, which is Escape from Gringotts. And as I looked around, I recognized a ton of the buildings and facades from the actual Lego set, which firstly was pretty cool and secondly made me feel like a very fake fan. That aside, when it comes to the buildings included, both look incredibly similar, with the biggest difference simply being the height when in scale with either a person or a Lego minifigure. Universal's buildings look to be almost double the height in total, which given how scaled down most of them were in comparison to Lego, absolutely needed to happen in order to create that alley feel. But the building's height was also used to create forced perspective so that the whole street front looks way bigger than it actually does. I know if you look at images of Diagon Alley, the whole thing feels very grand and very big and it is not like that if you actually get to go. When filled with guests, it becomes so clear just how small this whole subsection actually is. And across the entire street, I think overall the theme park looks incredible incredibly similar to the Lego set. However, there are some very key differences. As despite being one of the most well-known shops, I feel like out of the whole Diagon Alley street, Flourish and Blots wasn't an actual store within the Universal Diagon Alley land. The exterior as well probably varied the most between the theme park and the actual Lego set. However, in Lego form, it was actually one of the best kitted out sections of the set. It was built with an entire interior and had a ton of references to the Chamber of Secrets, whereas in Universal, it is just a facade. The exterior design too of the Lego set had way more detail and feels like a much more important element to the overall street. And instead of utilizing Flourish and Blots, Universal actually went all out with Madame Malkins instead, which was notably absent from the Lego set. And in my opinion, it's also one of the most well-known shops, so it was really surprising to me that it actually got left out in Lego form, but something like Scribblers on the other hand made the cut. Now for a theme park though, Madame Malkins I feel like definitely does make a little bit more sense, it being more of a clothing and school uniform store, and Universal selling a bunch of Harry Potter robes, t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, headbands, scrunchies, socks. Actually, I don't even know if they sell socks. But you get what I mean. It definitely makes way more sense for a theme park gift shop than a bookstore. We Size Wizard Weezers is one of the most similar to its Lego version. And unlike most of the stores, it didn't seem to have as much of a height extension since the window and the giant Weasley twin statue take up most of the facade on this store. However, the door locations were all out of whack, but a lot of the key details still matched between the two. Ollivanders and Scribblers though are the most similar when it comes to the Lego set versus the theme park. I mean, first Firstly, both of the buildings are side by side, which didn't typically happen when you look at the theme park versus the Lego set. The way the street was arranged was completely out of whack, but then again, I feel like Diagon Alley never really had a set order, so I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Now, if you weren't aware, at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, there is actually two Ollivanders locations, one being in Hogsmeade and the other being in Diagon Alley. And the whole store setup as well is very interactive, which surprisingly, there wasn't actually that many play features within Ollivanders in the Lego set. That 
That being said, to me, the Ollivanders section of the Diagon Alley set feels like it was taken straight from the theme park. And that is something that as a theme park fan, I really, really appreciate. But let's talk about the reason why I'm even here in the first place, Gringotts Bank. Now, for some reason, having Gringotts be a perfect representation of a theme park was incredibly important to me when it was being turned into a Lego set. So thank God that is what we got. After being able to build the Gringotts Lego set, seeing the ride in person again made me so happy. Firstly, let's talk about the building. What surprised me the most is that the tiny little alleyway and pet store were actually to the side of Gringotts. I thought this was just a thing that was built in order to make the Lego set feel a little bit more full and for it to connect to the other Diagon Alley buildings a little bit easier, but it turns out this is actually something that exists in the theme park. Now, unfortunately, there was no goblin statue and that I put down to simply just not having enough space in the Lego set, but the locker wall's present and for some reason that makes me really excited so I'm gonna give it points for that. Probably the biggest similarity though between theme park Gringotts and Lego Gringotts though has to be the giant Ukrainian iron belly that sits on top of the building. Now in the time that I had always talked about a Lego Gringotts set and what I would love that to be like one of the things I wanted the absolute most was for the Ukrainian iron belly to be included and to sit on top of Gringotts just like the theme park and that is exactly what the designers gave us. And the fact that I was able to bring the dragon to the theme park it's just one of those tiny little things that just made my little childish heart so, so, so happy. But in Lego and Universal's case, we didn't just get a building exterior. For research purposes only, obviously, I headed inside. Now, the first thing to talk about is the interior. Now, when it comes to the theme park, this is so impressive. The chandeliers look gorgeous. The marble pillars look beautiful. And there are goblin desks filled with goblin animatronics. And the whole thing is just so fun and feels very lively. And all of those elements, too, were replicated so well in the Lego set. Admittedly though, in Lego, I would have loved to have seen a couple more details on the marbled pillars to just make it look like the whole thing was marble. And I mean, the goblins don't move on their own either. They're a bit stationary, but I can't really fault Lego for that. But when it comes to the chandelier and the floor tiling and just even having the goblins desks in general, given how small the floor space was, I think they did a amazing job. When it comes to the underground, Universal is making a roller coaster. They are making a ride. So there was really not that many similarities between this and the Lego set. So I feel like technically I kind of have to fault Universal here, but the bits that they did get, I think look amazing. The cave system with the spikes hanging down for the ceiling is amazing. I mean, it's a roller coaster, so it's got track, which is also replicated in the Lego set. And for the most part, the carts look really, really similar, or at least as similar as you could get with a ride vehicle and a literal Lego build. I don't know why I decided to make this video in general. It doesn't make sense. We're not gonna make sense of it now. But another big difference though is that the ride doesn't have actual vault doors because one thing that has always kind of annoyed me about Escape from Gringotts is that for the most part the ride is all on a screen. It's really not as cool as I feel like it could have been. I mean there are some resemblance of other Gringotts cart tracks and waterfalls and caves and you know just like elements of Gringotts in general but the fact that it's all on a 2D screen really kind of ruins the whole underground experience when I compare it to a Lego set. Again this concept doesn't make sense. The ride was fun and Anyway, moving on. And while Theme Park Diagon Alley is very similar to Lego Set Diagon Alley, Gringotts feels as spot on as you could get replicating a theme park out of Lego. And I definitely don't think that that was the intention, but I cannot help draw the similarities just given how big of a Lego fan and theme park fan I am. They're grand, they're beautiful, and the dragon breathes fire. I could not have asked for anything more out of a Lego set and out of a theme park. So that was fun. I know that this video's concept didn't really make the most amount of sense, but it was something fun for me to do as I'd always wanted a Gringotts that looked exactly like the theme park. So why not actually go and compare them? That was my thought process here. At the end of the day though, I absolutely love what the Harry Potter designers did with both the Diagon Alley and Gringotts sets. I think they look fantastic. But if you don't have the space or money for Diagon Alley or for a trip to Universal, you can always build your own little one. At least that's what I did. You should go and watch the video I made on these after you've given this one a thumbs up, but otherwise, until next time, guys. I'll see you later.